evening, Locked On Astros Nation. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse here with another live edition of Locked On Astros. We've got so many things to talk about. Who will bridge the gap to Jeremy Pena when the season starts if the Astros don't sign Carlos Correa or go after Trevor Story or Simeon or a more long-term or multi-year contract? We'll talk about this. And is JV going to reject the qualifying offer? These things and more on the solo edition of Locked on Astros. Buckle in. Let's talk baseball. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked on Houston Astros, and this is your daily Astros podcast. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter at H-Town Wheelhouse on Instagram as well, and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Eric, the man Heisman, is out for the evening, but I am here with y'all to get you caught up on the latest news. We want to thank you for making Locked on Astros your first listen. Whenever you tweet us, tweet at us, or retweet our episodes, please use the hashtag First listen and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. Subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be the first to know when we are going live. We have intriguing guests coming all off season. Also listen on audio, Apple, Google, Spotify. And whenever you get your podcast, tell your smart device to play the podcast. Locked on Astros. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm here tonight, and we've got some things to talk about. I know last night we talked about Carlos Correa. Do some review, kids. Talked about Carlos Correa throwing shade at Derek Jeter. We talked about possible landing places for Carlos. The 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 rumor that seemed to swirl and put uh, Twitter upside down, where they said, "Oh, there's definitely a deal between Correa and the Tigers," which has not come to fruition. Another report today by Ken Rosenthal saying that Justin Verlander prefers to play in a on an East Coast team or for the Yankees over the Los Angeles Dodgers. What does that mean? And again, we're going to talk about this bridge to Jeremy Pena. But one of the things I want to mention, I was diving into our who listens to us and where do you listen to us from? And we have got some great listeners. Some of our top five cities are Houston, Spring, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Denver, Colorado. If you listen to us from California, from Georgia, Louisiana, outside of Texas, we appreciate y'all and we welcome you to the show, especially all our fellow Texans. Howdy, y'all. Again, this is a great show. We enjoy doing this five days a week. It's a real grind. But what other team would you rather talk about? The Houston Astros or the New York Stankies? That's right, the Houston Astros. So let's get started here. Justin Verlander has not has not rejected or signed the qualifying offer. What does that mean? Now, let me say this. Noah Syndergaard getting a one-year $21 million deal after pitching not in any of the previous two seasons um, – May makes me wonder. Hello, Arlie. Hey, you know, thanks for tuning in from Nebraska. We appreciate you, sir. Um, hey, that's home of Jake Myers, Jake the Rake Myers. That's right. And so good deal. Thanks for listening all the way from the Cornhusker State. Go Huskers. Now, Justin Verlander has not accepted the offer. And earlier today, Ben Verlander, friend of Locked on Astros, went on 97.5 with the Killer Bees, and he basically, they asked him the question, where is he going to sign? Is is your brother going to accept the qualifying offer? There was a bunch of hubbub in the playoffs about him not, you know, players electing him not to throw the first pitch, and he said, would your brother re-sign with the Astros and run it back? And he said, you know, I don't, I don't see why that wouldn't be a possibility, but he said, I don't know what he's going to do. Ben Verlander said, I don't think he knows what he's going to do. He said every day he probably changes his mind. He's got options. Noah Syndergaard with the $21 million one-year signing and a younger player, even with the injury history, may signal that JV could get north of $20 million. Now, it's my feeling that if the Astros are able to wrangle Justin Verlander, that would be a two-year deal worth $40 million. 
What do I have to back that up? Just good old gut feeling, people I talk to, things I see online. I kind of try to read between the lines here and there. And I know the owner, Jim Crane, really, really, really loves Justin Verlander. The bottom line is this, is that's what's best for the club. Is Justin Verlander waiting to see what they do with Carlos Correa? If they sign Carlos Correa to a big deal, is Justin Verlander more likely to come back? So let's think about this. If Justin Verlander rejects a qualifying offer and he fields free agent calls, and on the outside chance, because you all know if you listen to this show, even at least once in the last 10 to 12 days, I don't think Carlos Correa is returning to the Astros. But let's say he does, because I really do like Carlos Correa in Astros uniform. I see him as finishing his career in Houston. He, it just seems fitting for him. You've got a statue of Bagwell and Biggio. You need a statue of Carlos Correa out in front of Minute Maid Park, and I don't think there's many that would disagree. If we get Carlos Correa back, I think signing JV, the chances of that goes way up. He may consider to turn his head because, hey, I know who's behind me at shortstop. And that chemistry, you, 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 can't, you can't replace the chemistry of Altuve and Correa. But that also can't be the deciding factor because all that comes, that chemistry comes with experience. And he'll just have to get used to someone else being there. Um, yeah, and so <laughs> this is what's funny. Mr. Cronus says, Syndergaard signing to the Angels is all that the folks at MLB on Fox need to say that the Angels will win the AL West. Hey, they were going to win the AL West without that guy. They were going to win the AL West with the pitching they had. Imagine that. You know, I mean, people are allowed to dream a little. And, and you know, I... I I banter a lot and I kind of make make fun of myself a lot about when when it comes to not being a homer, am I a homer or whatever. But the bottom line is this. The Angels are more than one Noah Syndergaard away. They're going to need to get a Robbie Ray. They're going to need to get a Trevor Story. They're going to need to get two or three other players to even come close. Because remember the Mariners? They made a late season surge, and who says they're going away? They got Kilnick, they've got young players, they got JP Crawford, Scott Service. I just, um, well, he got edged out by Kevin Cash, but I think a lot of people thought that Service was going to be AL Manager of the Year. That team will be a true contender. I don't think the Angels will. I think it's going to be between the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners. So, what I want to do right now is I want to say this. Any report you hear about the Yankees talking to a player, take it with a grain of salt. You know why? Because the Yankees are going to talk to every player. And I joked on Twitter, if my late grandfather had something to offer the New York Yankees in 2022, they would make him an offer. They're going to offer everybody everything. And so at the end of the day, it's what are the Astros willing to do? Who are they willing to sign? And that's what I want to talk about coming up in the second segment. Um, so Artie says this. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Arlie Riffle says this. Why do I keep hearing our Astros are going to sign Starling Marte? Now, all I can say is this. Everything that I know of the situation has Marte as a strong favorite to the Astros, both from the Astros side and Marte's side. Beyond that, I can't really expound on what I know or what I've heard. And it's just one of those things where at the end of the day, it's with the, for me, it's the evidence that's being presented. And if a player wants to come here, then they will make things work. Now, the speed at which it gets done, the amount of years or amount of money, I think for Marte is easily between 16 to $20 million, probably closer to 20 on about a three-year deal. He will be 33 this next year. If you get Marte, you can slide Marte to left if Brantley leaves after next year, okay, and put Pedro Leon in center field, and you could have a developing Leon, a strong Kyle Tucker, and a Starling Marte. I think Marte's RBIs are going to go up. A lot of people said, well, he doesn't have RBIs. Um, he doesn't have, a, he's not great in that area, but he also hasn't hit 
at Minute Maid Park. Now he has quite a few home runs, but his but his RBI numbers are down compared to where his home run numbers are. But I think that shoots through the roof at Minute Maid Park. Have you guys seen a ball fly to Minute Maid Park? I have. I saw a couple during the World Series, and it wasn't our guys doing it. It was the Braves doing all the hitting. Marte, to me, makes sense, and let me tell you why. Number one, his speed. His speed is indelible. Number two, he gives you a solid major league center fielder until Pedro Leon's ready to come up. And three, Jake Myers is going to be your fourth outfielder. Chas McCormick is going to be a a, a – He's going to be a bench guy, maybe go back to AAA, but you've got a log jam in center field. I would rather have a guy in center field for the next three years that's going to be solid and produce solid and then let the other guys develop where they may. It does leave Myers and McCormick out on the fringe. I don't like the Myers portion of it. I don't mind the McCormick. I think you could trade a McCormick for a decent for a hard throwing relief pitcher you could get for another utility fielder, but you've got utility fielders. Okay. So with that being said, all this talking about these free agents and cause this next segment, we're going to get into Jeremy Pena and who do we bridge that gap with? We're going to assume that Carlos Correa is gone and that Jeremy Pena is next in line, but how do we get from, from point a of no Carlos Correa to point B of Jeremy Pena? So I love Thanksgiving, all the good food and treats and plenty of them, but maybe you want yummy dessert, but it isn't so full of calories and sugars. Well, that's perfect because this is Built Bar time, baby. It's holiday dessert time for Built Bars. One slice of pie has an upwards of 300 calories. That's on the low end. Most Built Bars are around 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with the coconut Built Bar or the raspberry Built Bar instead of the raspberry pie. Lots of good flavors to replace that pie. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, and high protein. Covered in 100% real chocolate, not fake. The real stuff, the good stuff. Share some at your family gatherings. It will make things less awkward. Maybe Aunt Betty hasn't tried a Built Bar yet. New surprises all month. Limited time flavors arriving at Built.com regularly. So check the site often. There's nothing like a Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be... An awesome event, a huge event with all sort of surprises. So go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your first order. That's promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at Built.com. That's right. Now, so with that being said, let's talk about the bridge to Jeremy Pena. Now, I need to kind of lay a foundation here because I'm... I'm going to go off and I'm going to say I'm not going to get too terribly detailed so we don't extend this longer than it needs to be. But let's say that the Astros aren't willing to do what it takes to extend Carlos Correa. And they're not very serious about, and this this is, this is hypothetical, okay? I'm not saying they are or they aren't. I'm saying uh, imagine a world where the Astros do not do fill in the blank, where they are not serious contenders for Seager who I think is going to New York, who are not serious in going after Trevor Story or Javi Baez or Marcus Simeon, who I know a lot of Astros fans kind of like, okay? I'll tell you why you bridge the gap, okay? I'll pause what I'm saying. to You bridge the gap because of his hand injury. And the case is being made for p- baseball people all across the world. I've seen um, there is a great article in The Athletic by Kaplan, um, I know Apollo Dez from Apollo Media has bantered about this today on Twitter, and I've seen others talk about it. Because of his hand injury, you've got to get him more at bats before you throw him into the major league um, just whirlwind of pitching. Do you remember Alex Bregman when he first came up? Do you remember Kyle Tucker when he first came up? We don't need to have a repeat of that. Now, he will make his debut in 2022 but not starting in 2022. So you can first look in-house to Aledmus Diaz, who is not a great defensive shortstop. And the guys that I'm going to present to you as stop gaps to get to Pena have decent defensive gloves, but not great bats. So what that means is you have two weaker bats in the lineup rather than just one in Martin Maldonado. 
Now, the first one, and I've seen Larry the GM talk about him quite a bit and who who I like, who's not great defensively, but offensively, I think he's he's top notch. And he's a utility guy is Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor out of L.A. is a free agent. He could play center field. He could play just about anywhere. So get this. He has a 114 OPS plus over the last five years with the Dodgers. He has an above average OPS in each season in that span. So signing him would mean the Astros could basically retain their second round draft pick in 2022, which would be easy to justify for a player of Taylor's caliber. And you could basically sign him to a four-year deal and it wouldn't break your bank. Now, um, Bregman will not be going to shortstop. So I'm just going to table that real quick before that suggestion comes up. James Click has said that's not going to happen. Um, Andrelton Simmons. I don't know if Mr. Corona or Dave or someone on the show the other night said Andrelton Simmons, they like him. Now, offensively with the Twins, he was not good. He was 57 OPS plus and 451 plate appearances. But his defense is where it wins, was where this wins for the Astros. He's a four-time gold glover. Four-time gold glover, okay? And so you can hope that he plays to that gold glove level to bridge the gap for um, Pena. See right here, David Odom says, I love him. I love Andrelton Simmons. And a lot of people do. And so, and so that is, that is key. You know, that's a key thing to look at. Who, who are people looking at? Who do they want to see? What do the, what do the fans want? What do our listeners want? Okay. So he had a 98 OPS plus between 2017 and 2020. And that gives you some hope. Now in 2021, he had a one year deal worth $10.5 million. And so he's probably going to get something less than that. So you're not, you're not, Spinning the bank. Andrelton Simmons, how old is he? Andrelton Simmons, I believe, and I I had his age up here, and it is not in front of me. Um, Andrelton Simmons, I think, is 32 or 33. Um, you know what, uh, Mr. Corona, why don't you look that up for me? Because I don't have that. I do have the other guy's age. I don't know why his age isn't on here. It, it must not have made it um, from the inner, from the inter Googles here. But Jonathan VR is a guy. He's a journeyman. We know him. We remember the butt slide. Um, he'll be 30 on opening day. He had a 102 OPS plus and 505 plate appearances for the Mets. Um, he's a switch hitter. And the perk he, with him is he's a utility man, likely a one-year deal worth less than $4 million. So there's a budget right there. You would get VR on a on a budget. All right. Now Diaz, we know it's his injury history. Okay, Simmons is 32. I wasn't sure if he's 32. I think he'll be 33 come midseason. Thank you, Mr. Corona. See, we got our we got our we got our listeners coming in hot, man. These guys crush it every time. Every time. That's okay. I, I think we all thought he was older. He does. No offense, Mr. Simmons, but you do look a little older than, than 32, but don't we all? And so um, next, I would say Jose Iglesias is is a is a decent candidate. Um, he did struggle last season, um, and you know he he was with the Red Sox, but he didn't have enough time and wasn't there long enough to basically qualify for the postseason. And he does chase a lot. He does rarely walk, so his offense is going to be a drop off there. He's thirty two. But it would definitely be a low end, low budget, I think, low risk, high reward type of signing. Um, and so those those are the first couple guys that I want to hit on. Um, there are there are two more, and then there's two trade possibilities. Okay, so the, why are we talking about bridging the gap? If you're listening, thank you for listening to Locked On Astros, we're your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen. And we really appreciate all the support. We've been getting so many new listeners. We've been getting so many new follows. It warms our heart to know that you guys take your time out of your day to listen to us on the way to work, on the way home from work, or when you're on a trip. So stay tuned into Locked On Astros. We're your team every day. Now, here's an interesting under-the-radar guy. And um, Kaplan, Kaplan talked about him in his article, and it makes sense. You have a Leary Garcia who on opening day, he, he's, he's going to be 31, okay? He was a super utility guy for the White Sox, all right? His natural position is a shortstop. He had an 
um, an 81 OPS plus in his career, but a 97 OPS plus in the last two seasons. So that definitely is good. He actually played six different positions for Chicago in 2021. Now, someone like that, again, these guys are a bridge to Pena. They're not a permanent fix. Now, I would stop myself if I was listening and say, well, hold on. If you're considering all these other guys, why don't you just stay with Diaz? Why go pay somebody else when you stay with Diaz? And at the, at the end of the day, you would do that because of Diaz's injury history. You don't know how long the guy's going to stay healthy. I love Olympus Diaz as a hitter. I think he offers just a gritty player who goes out and plays the game. But at the end of the day, I really think that they're going to go look for something lower ceiling. I know Eric wants Trevor's story, and I, I don't think it's a bad signing, but I think at the end of the day, Trevor's story is just way too much. Um, he's going to want too much money for too many years. Um, Freddie Galvis. Freddie Galvis bats switch on. He, he is a switch hitting batter. On opening day, he will be 32. He was with the Phillies most recently. He's a good defender, but he's never had a 100 OPS plus season. Um, the highest is like 82 plus. And again, we're talking about guys that are going to come in and they're going to not give you the bat, but they're going to give you the glove. So what about Leon? Okay, so um, I'll hit on Leon in the in the last segment here after I wrap this up over after these next next few players, Jared. And if in the third segment I get into it and I forget, remind me in the chat and I'll throw it up there. If Click were to watch this video, what would your list about bridge gap shortstop be? Okay, so that's so these these are the guys I, I'm giving you, and I'm going to run back down um, n- names in order. Now, there are two candidates that you could trade for, and Paul DeJong, now he's had a rough couple seasons, but he could have a breakout year. He does have money coming to him um, that the Astros would have to pay out in $6 million in 2022, $9 million in 2023, and a $2 million buyout, a $12.5 million team option for 2024. Um, but... If you could get De Young to come in and have a breakout season or a comeback season in 2022, and he could sit there for you and do what he's supposed to do and and hit the way he's supposed to hit, that wouldn't be bad. Um, yes. Now, this is all Mr. Corona speaking as if we don't get Carlos Correa. Again, disclaimer, I want Carlos Correa. But if we don't get him, these are the names. And the last name, and I'll go back to him in order, Nick Ahmad who will be 32, great defensively, but he's not a good offensive player. Not a good offensive player. Now, maybe there's a deal to be made, okay? Even though you have Ahmed and Maldonado in the same lineup, you don't want too many spots giving up that offense, but Nick Ahmed could come to Minute Maid Park and turn things around offensively. They could get him. And so it's just one of the things. Thank you, Mr. Baseball. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it's great to meet you. Glad to have you guys on. Um, thank you so much. So um, I'm going to take a pause there and um, answer some of these questions. Um, Mr. Rashad says, we don't know. Maybe the team has someone paid to listen to different shows about them. Now, I'll tell you this. I'm not necessarily think that the Astros listen to Locked On Astros per se for the information we give, but I know that they do listen. I know that they do go to the different shows and they are aware of what's going on. So if you're from the Houston Astros organization, check us out. We're Locked On Astros. Make us your first listen. And Bet Online is the best place to place all your sports bets. We're back and better than ever with the new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props and odds and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball, football action this season. Head to our website, update, updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So, 
I'm going to run back through this list so y'all can can do a recap. We're going to do a review, kids, like we're in class. And these are the names if Carlos Correa leaves and if they are not going to go after some of the big names. We started with Chris Taylor. We went to Andrelton Simmons. We went to Jose Iglesias, Larry Garcia, Freddie Galvis, and then trade candidates Paul J. Jung and Nick Ahmed. Again, those are that's my list. There may be more out there. Brandon Crawford, I, I believe, is staying in San Francisco. But there's so much more left to talk about here in this show. And we're going to wrap this up here in the next couple minutes. Um, I was asked this. Oh, um, so what about Pedro Leon? Is he going to go back to center? He will go to center field if they don't sign um, – if they don't sign Starling Marte, <laughs> Starling Marte, if he comes in, I think that's another bridge um, to Pedro Leon. Pedro Leon, I believe we'll see him at some point in 2022, depending on what's available for him. He may be a September call up. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. Brandon Crawford did get extended in San Francisco, but at the end of the day, we know Pedro Leon is coming. We know Jeremy Pena is coming. He may need a, two to 300 more at bats in order to be major league ready. That's why we're discussing a stop gap in the off chance that Carlos Correa does not sign with the Astros. Who are they going to get to take his place while we wait for Jeremy Pena? So that is something we're going to discuss all off season. Justin Verlander, I do not think is going to New York, but then again, I don't know. Everything I feel, I feel he stays in Houston two years, 40 million. I may be way off. I may eat my crow later. That's fine. He goes to Detroit. I think if he doesn't go to Houston and it would be interesting. I saw some predictions and I'm going to end on this. Here are some major league predictions from Anthony Castro events. And I think we went over these earlier and some of them I don't think will come to fruition. Remember he said Correa to the Tigers. I don't think happens. Corey Seager to the Yankees, I think does. The Giants signed Scherzer and Justin Verlander. Now, that's an interesting prospect. If Justin Verlander doesn't want to play for the Dodgers, does he want to play for the Giants? So at the end of the day, I would like to see the Astros get, here's my wish list, Starling Marte in center field, Justin Verlander, re-sign him, and someone like an Andrelton Simmons or even a Chris Taylor, I think would be better, to bring in the Astros would be an unstoppable force offensively once again. I just don't think, to wrap this up, I don't think Robbie Ray leaves Toronto. I think he stays. I think Toronto would be insane to let him go with that young, powerful offense that they have. And if Verlander stays, it will be because of one person, folks. His name is Jim Crane, and he's the owner of the Astros. And that's all I have tonight for the Locked on Astros. We appreciate y'all listening. Thank you for following us. Thank you for liking our show. Thank you for subscribing. Share with your friends and family and let them know that Locked on Astros is your team every day. I'm H. Town Wheelhouse. Check me out on Twitter at H. Town Wheelhouse and on Instagram or at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, check out Locked on Astros Nation, a newly formed page for our Locked on Astros fans. So y'all stay tuned, stay Stay red up on your baseball, and let's go see what the Astros do this offseason. Carlos Correa, please come back. I'm out.